Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I'm here in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania at the 2018 edition of the 18th Century Artisan Show. And this is the opening gun, so everybody hasn't come in yet, but uh, we're in the Contemporary Makers Hall right now, so let's take a look around. This is a beauty of being in here early, as I can film without a lot of noise. This is Ken Gahagan's display, and Ken makes some of the greatest club butt fowlers that I've ever seen. Some beautiful knives on display here that Ken made. I'm at Tim Williams' table. Tim's not here yet. I'm in here pretty early, and Tim is a buddy of mine, and he makes some beautiful stuff. So he's working on one right now that's still in the white, and he's got a replica of the Davy Crockett rifle, and this interests me because that was a York County rifle, and I'm making a York County design myself right now. So. I'm going to get a few pictures of this. But of course, only in my dreams will the one I'm building look anywhere near as good as this. I, I could only wish for that. <laughs> Here at Chris Polizzi's table, and she does beautiful straps. And some nice hunting frogs here. Well, I'm here at Mark Thomas's table, and uh, I'm going to try to get past some of the glare here. But you can see the beautiful engraving that Mark does, and he can make anything. He can make powder horns. He can make guns. And a lot of them cost a lot of money because he's very talented. But he also makes the silver jewelry, which you can get for a hundred bucks or so, and well worth it. So you can have some of Mark's engraving without spending five thousand dollars. You know, the first time I saw this gun of Mark Thomas's. Mark told me this grain was actually painted on, and he is so talented, I believed him. But this is just a beautiful piece of burl. That Mark did his usual fantastic job on. He can carve, and he can engrave metal like nobody else I know. Well, as you would expect, there are plenty of gun makers here at the 18th Century Artisan Show. But part of the fun of coming to these shows is to see all of the other 18th century crafts that are represented as well. So there's everything from pottery to uh, woodworking, some beautiful boxes. Uh, just let you take a look at these, and then we'll then we'll move on to drooling over some guns again. There are several leather workers represented here at the show, and they're turning out some beautiful hunting pouches. And you can never have too many of those, right? Yeah, I have a pretty good collection of different guys' knives, and I thought, I'm going to just do this while Hershel's still able to do it. So I have, uh, I've got... So I'm here with Eric Fleischer, who's a bag maker, and he makes some beautiful stuff, as you can see, and uh, this one has caught my eye right here. So, Eric, what can you tell me about that bag? Well, this bag is uh, it's shown in two books. It's in the Henry Kaufman rifle book and in the Wallace, or in the uh, 
Madison Grant bag book. And it's uh, uh, the original shown and it's it's in black and white photos you can tell it's black leather. It had white trim and it had uh, mine is lined with red and white wool material and they use red and white homespun in the original but it's a copy of an original bag I'm not sure what the time period is but it's just something very different and it caught my eye also and it is eye-catching beautiful work I'm here with Chris Lowback who's a gun maker and so much more and what he's doing is he's developing a new lock and why don't you show us what you're working on Chris well this is the original lock uh, the, the first one that we hope to come out with and this is a German Jaeger lock and um, what I've done is I've taken this lock and then I've modeled it in 3d CAD and then um, I took the lock and printed it out of plastic and um, was able to function test it. There's all the parts and even in plastic it still works. Let's us know that everything is where it needs to be. So then we've taken it a step further and um, now that we have all the parts that are being function tested, everything works fine, we've now printed them out of metal. And this will be the masters that will be used to make the molds. And this is the lock plate. Now this has been scaled up to allow for shrinkage. And here's a pan that was also 3D printed out of metal. So we have a couple of parts there. And then the tumblers, the bridles, and the sears we're going to have CNC. And there's the fly, that was also CNC. This one is CNC right from the manufacturer, how we will get them. So all of our locks, we have, I have about eight locks that I want to come out with, and hopefully this one should be out in May. Um, we are on track, which is a good thing. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thank you. And keeping on with the lock theme, here's one of Stan Hollenbaugh's uh, J.P. Beck locks. Beautiful lock. Mitch Yates is probably best known for being one of the best gun builders in the country. But he's also a very talented silversmith. And um, this is a silver gorget that uh, he put together very recently. And it's a beauty. I picked up one of these powder horns myself, a priming horn. You just can't have too many of those. Again, again, here with Nate McKenzie, rifle builder. And uh, Nate, tell us about that beautiful rifle you got. This is a copy of a Stoffel Long rifle. I have two original Stoffel Long rifles. This is kind of a uh, combination of the two. Stoffel Long was a gunsmith who worked about a mile away from Dixon's muzzleloader gun shop where they have the gun makers fair every year. And his grave is down there about three quarters of a mile from Dixon's. And I have a picture of <coughs> this rifle leaning against his grave. Uh, he had a very folksy style. His patch box engraving was kind of folksy style. Again, that spring loaded also. Is that a Lehigh County? Uh, Lehigh, yes, sir. Uh, some people argue it's Burks because it's like right on the border. The people down there actually call it Alamango. No carving. I have never seen a stuff along rifle with carving on it. Uh huh. It has a 44 inch Getz swap barrel and a Chambers Golden Age lock. Yeah, it's a beautiful rifle. It is a flint lock.
Well, you're looking at some absolutely beautiful 18th century copper work. And I think it might be interesting to meet the coppersmith himself. So, let's go talk to him. I'm with Peter Goebel of uh, Goose Bay Workshops, and Peter is probably the premier coppersmith for historical copper. And he's worked on 19 different films. This is all of his work here. And Peter, can you tell us some of the movies you've worked on? Oh, sure. Um, Master and Commander. I did The Patriot. Uh, the best one was The Muppets Treasure Island. Um, all sorts of movies and TV shows. Uh, Lewis and Clark movie. Um, I did Turn, a TV show. I'm doing a series now, Lodge 49. Too many to even think about. And a couple hundred museums have my work. So if I'm the premier accomplishment, I should be in for a pay raise somewhere along here, <laughs> I would hope. Well, you do beautiful work. I have to Thank say, you. this is absolutely gorgeous stuff. Thank you very much. Well, that does it for this year's 18th Century Artisan Show. Uh, the show runs the beginning of February every year in beautiful Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. So I'll be here next year, and maybe I'll meet you here too.